Welcome to this Goldilocks Productions presentation. Before we begin the show, let's go over quick guidelines. Callers, if you would like to get on air to ask the show host a question, please press 1. All those callers that do not press 1 and any blocked phone numbers, unlisted phone numbers, and Skype callers whose phone numbers do not show up on the switchboard, you will be in listen mode only. It is not mandatory that the show hosts bring on callers. So please keep your questions to one question only and be mindful and respectful of the other callers that are calling in and of the show host as well. If you have any issues or any problems um, and even any compliments or testimonials, please contact the Goldilocks Productions show producer and owner at the email of Productions at hotmail.com. Again, that email is Goldilocks with a Y, Goldilocks Productions at hotmail.com. Thank you. Now on with the show. Shelly Hoffberg is a clairvoyant, medium, pet psychic, and tarot reader. She does not ask for the details about your life, but primarily relies on her gift of clairvoyance to receive the psychic insights that will be the most helpful to you about your soulmate, relationships, money concerns, and your career path. As a pet psychic, she will receive insights about what your pet or pets wants you to know. As a medium, she will connect with your loved ones on the other side. Shelley Hoffberg is the host of the Psychic Horizon Radio Show, produced by Goldilocks Productions and presented on Blog Talk Radio, Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Shelley brings together the pioneers and visionary teachers to share with you some of the most enlightening knowledge that is out there today to expand your horizons and open the path to higher. No, 323-870-3791. Oh, oh, okay, dear. I'll talk. I see you now. Okay, bye-bye. Welcome to the Psychic Horizon Show. This is your host, Psychic Shelley Hoffberg. And today's uh, special guest, is uh, uh, Lucinda Collitz from Boda, B-O-T-I, uh, Studios in Anaheim. And you could look her up on the Internet. Um, she's a metaphysical store. Uh, she does uh, psychic readings and healings. And her partner, Jenna, does healings and hypnotherapy. And they have a lot of uh, uh, an ongoing uh, psychic fair on the third um, Saturday of each month, if you want to come to the Psychic Fair, there's psychics and healers and vendors and free lectures, and they have a lot of uh, people doing events, so please check them out on the Internet. And uh, before I bring on Lucinda, uh, I just want to make uh, some announcements. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a spirit circle at uh, Practical Magi uh, and Bellflower from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. this uh, Friday, if you wish to come to the uh, Spirit Circle. Um, I will be doing Heart Space Psychic Fair um, this coming Saturday in Irvine. Um, And if you go to my website, um, www.psychichorizon.com, You will see all my upcoming uh, events that I do and uh, events that I'm doing. Um, I'm now ready to bring on, uh, and I do have some uh, guest, uh, um, uh, Cynthia um, M-A-K-R-O-U-L, that will be my guest uh, next week. Um, And she does so healing, uh, so readings. Uh, that's Cynthia Starr. Sorry about that. Cynthia Starr, S-T-A-R-R. Um, Bob the Psychic will be on uh, the show on November um, 7th, 
and I will be na- announcing other upcoming guests. I'm now ready to bring on my guest, Lucinda. Hello, Lucinda. Hi, Shelly. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm well. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. And you can you tell the, uh, the callers uh, about yourself? Sure. I'm a gifted clairvoyant medium that does voice channeling and trans channeling. I also read energies, and so today, as I give the readings, it'll be the energy that's presented, which is always changeable, and uh, it'll be the best possible outcome. I am a sensic energist, is what I like to call it, and what that is, is it just means that uh, I do um, energy alchemy, and so really good, yeah, that's me. Oh, awesome. Um, um. Oh, all right, and uh, we're now ready. Let's take a caller, Lucinda, and then we'll sure. start our inter- and then we'll start our interview. Um, the first caller is area code five one zero. Hello, five one zero. Hello, this is Cecilia. Hi, Could Cecilia. you say your name for me three times? Cecilia. Your full name. Cecilia Evans. Cecilia Evans. Cecilia Evans. Thank you. And so how are you today, Ocelia? Um, I'm really good. Um, you know, my question is, uh, it's interesting. I've never heard anybody speak of energy alchemy <laughs> the way that you did uh, uh-huh. in terms of reading people's fields. And uh, I would just like to know in general, what do you see for me coming up? What's in okay. my alchemy, alchemical field? All right. And so what I see is red. So you're actually in manifestational mode is the way that it looks, but it's very heart centered. And so as it's heart centered, you're driven to provide for others as well as yourself. So you're creating some core values in a foundational standing. And uh, it looks like you're stepping out into something that you haven't done before. Is that accurate? Yes. Very good. Um, It is a faded, F-A-T-E-D, faded, um, space for you. It's purpose. It's part of your purpose. And um, it's going to work out. Let's see what's a, it'll be a lot of work, obviously. You're going to wonder whether or not that was enough. Just be patient and know that um, you're in a never give up state. It is providing for home and heart. Uh, it is a passion of yours. And um, you'll feel well enriched by moving in that direction. So as I see, all right? Okay. The field is this beautiful, like your light body is, I'm just going to, I'm just going to push the energy because you keep your energy really tight to you because you like to be really well protected. Um, your etheric field, if you push it away from you just a little bit, you're still well protected. It just gives you a little bit more operating space. It allows things to come in a little bit faster, so that's what you're feeling right now, okay? And then we're just okay. letting in a little bit of uh, the divine white light, all right? Okay, so you were looking for clarity on a decision that you're getting ready to make. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And so um, if I were to give you like a yes, no answer, would that be sufficient? Uh, no, I guess. Yeah. You know, in generalities, everything that you said makes sense. I'm, I'm looking to um, find a spirit is, is guiding me to a home, a piece of land. And right. how soon it's going to unfold is kind of what's up in the air. You know, I don't know. If yeah, I but you're in conflict to... emotionally over it. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Is that because you're moving away from family? Um, I've chosen to move away from family, and that has caused them conflict. Right. That's I, what I see I there. It's the right decision. Okay. Well, if you were to... All right, so I'm going to have you do something, okay? I'm going to give, I'm going to teach you an empowerment tool, all right? Okay. And so what I'd like for you to do is just close your eyes. Everybody who's listening, you can do the same thing. It's something that we uh, overlook quite a bit of the time, but since we are in our own field, we have our best information. So what I'd like for you to do is just, as you close your eyes, 
center yourself. Focus on your heart center. Really bring your energy into like your your heart, right there in your heart chakra. Okay. Just as yeah. you center it, you're moving from your cranial brain into your heart brain. You can even put your right hand over the center of your heart. So that way all the energies will focus right there. All right. And then ask your body from the inside of your body, show me yes. You'll get a little bit of a energy answer. There you go. And then ask your body on the inside, show me no. Okay. And they're very slight for you, okay, Celia? So don't worry about it, but you can tell the difference. And um, what I'd like for you to do right now is just say, is this the right move? Say it on the inside. Is this the right move? And so what was your answer? You know, I had already made the move. I've already moved to a new Yeah, that's what I thought. So the decision is already done. It's just, it's, and I've always felt strongly that it was the right move. I, I, okay, and so you're in the right my, place. Yes, I feel I'm in the right place. Okay, and so what was your other question then? It, I guess it's a time, it was more of a time thing um, about making permanent, more semi-permanent plans. How long did I need to be in limbo before the actual land was going to show up? You know, you have to live somewhere. So do I sign a lease and working while I'm looking? And those are the types of, of things. But um, I have already relocated, technically, to, to the other state. <laughs> right? So you've already committed yourself in those relationships. And so Absolutely. you're kind of dissatisfied because you'd like for it to happen a little bit faster. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay because, like, we get anxious. Once we know that it's the right direction, it makes it challenging for us to be um, patient as the foundation is laid for us to be um, fruitful, right? And you're doing a lot of retrospect, introspect, introspect but um, you're really in a good space, and it will be, you know, it will work itself out. Thank you, and everything you said has made sense. Oh, good, good. And so, um, Shelly, would you like to add to that? Uh, yes, I think that you, know, you needed to put some a distance um, between you and your family. They tend to get too involved with what you're doing or not be, uh, not be supportive of what you're doing. And so I feel that you needed to make this move. And I do feel that um, the place that you have moved in um, is the right and perfect place for you. It's a, a good place. And uh, I feel that you'll be there for a long time. And it feels moving into that community, you know, where the house is, and moving into that community that it's going to bring you uh, a lot of, um, uh, new opportunities, uh, you know, to uh, meet, meet to meet and network with other people. Because I feel you have something planned um, as far as promoting yourself and promoting what it is you're doing, promoting a career, and it feels like you're going to find people that you can, you know, that have the same uh, interests that you do, and that you're going to be able to. Um, network with a lot of people and and make contacts um, with people that would be interested in uh, utilizing your business. So um, so this feels like to me this is a good you know uh, time period uh, uh, for you. Um, I feel that it's important since you are a bit you're doing business that you get involved with network business networking groups because that business networking groups is a good way to make uh, contacts 
And so you might want to go to meetup.com and put uh, network uh, business networking groups in the search bar and look for some networking groups in your area, maybe get involved with the Chamber of Commerce. I'm feeling that you need to get yourself out there more. And to get yourself out there more, I feel that you know, joining the Chamber of Commerce or getting into uh, some meetup groups, business meetup groups, would help, you know, would help your business to grow and um, expand. I do feel that you want a partner. I'm, I'm not seeing a, a relationship around you, and it feels like um, that it has been at least a year or maybe more um, since there was um, a relationship. I feel that there was someone that you lost, um, that there was some separation. And and so it's all, so almost I'm also feeling uh, that there's going to be some kind of maybe single group um, that you're going to be getting involved with and that you're going to be meeting somebody by the end of the year and that you're going to be getting into a relationship. It feels that this is a year for you to meet somebody and have a relationship. So I'm also seeing a relationship for you. Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I feel you're going to meet somebody because you know you look you're you look good for your age. You're attractive and you're you know you're very spiritual and uh, a very gifted person. I feel you. I feel you have a healing and intuitive abilities, and I feel that you're going to you know end up meeting a relationship, but it's going to be through a single group. So you should go for meet up and put networking groups in the search bar, and then you should also put single groups in the search bar because Meetup has all kinds of groups because I really think that this will, this is where you're going to find the man and this is where you're going to find people that you could, you know, um, you know network with to, to do business. So I think that that would be um, um, beneficial for you. And um, Lucenda um, do you want to give Lucille, Lucille your uh, contact information and give her your website? You know, uh, what state do you live in, Lucilia? Florida. All right. Um, Lucenia does healings and readings on, on you know, uh, you know, through phone or on the internet. So, Lucenia, give Lucilia your contact information. Lucilia, my name is Lucinda Collis. Uh, my telephone number is 714-220-8351. Uh, you can reach me through Bati Studios, so B is in boy, O-T-I, studios.com. And it stands for, it's an acronym for Beautiful on the Inside. And right now, right now I'm, uh, I'm in agreement. It did seem like your move was, uh, generated through generated by a business venture. Is that right? Uh, I'm retired and I really don't have a business so, or anything along those lines, but I do feel so did you, is wanting me I'm to sorry. create um, a type of a sacred space on land. So I, I don't know if it may unfold into a business, but no, I'm not. I, yeah, you are going to be doing a business. And and then well, and maybe I, that's why and maybe that's why I was picking up business because uh, I saw you doing a business. So I think the sacred space that you have, you're going to have workshops, you're going to have events, um, you're going to use your property for allow event coordinators to have events there because there's good money in that if they you know, you rent your property for events. But do yourself. I feel our teacher, or a healer, are very intuitive, and you're going to be having events on that property. I think that spirit gave you that property, you know, so that you could be prosperous and abundant. And I feel that, you know, because money is tight for you. So I feel that you are going to be having events, and other people are going to be doing events on your property. And you'll either charge them a fee to do the events, or you'll get a percentage of the event. But I feel that you're going to be doing that, so there is a reason and a purpose that Spirit led you to this property. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, so, it's so, going to have. I feel very strongly, and Lucinda felt it too. So I think there's well, something I, you're going to be I doing. What I felt was that what I felt what I felt when I asked, right, was that um, you were very spirit led in this move. That's what I felt. And then when you had mentioned 
the spirit led you to the land and you're referring to land in a sacred way. Is that accurate? I, have, I haven't found the land yet. I'm in the general area, but I'm waiting for the land to present itself. But it is sacred land, what spirit has communicated. Okay, great. Because, like, then this makes sense. Okay, so the message that I got while you were talking was that pay attention to the moon cycles and uh, do a ritual. You're very good at rituals. What you need to do is grab, right, so grab um, a handful of land that you would like, like go out and look at the land, right, visit some sites, and grab a handful of the land and do a ritual with it and make it sacred, and then allow it to be drawn to you, whichever one. And I'm seeing, like you have several that you really like, but... What I'm seeing is to narrow it down to three. Seven is like, it looks like you have like seven that you're really looking at, like that you would be satisfied with. On the 27th is the new moon. I would uh, suggest going and doing the ritual on that um, eve. And uh, it should, it should naturally incorporate your belief system, allow the energy to play outside instead of inside. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Okay. And so as you allow it to build, then um, that's, uh, as you allow it to build, it's gathering information. And then when it comes to the manifestational part of it, you um, bring it in and then you focus on it. Hold your, name it, name each of the lands, right? Name them, like you have, you have totems, you have animal totems, is that right? Yes. Okay, so your animal totems, they're scout, like I see them, they prowl, your, some of your animal totems prowl, okay? Most of them are nocturnal, is that right? Yeah. Okay, and so they're prowling, and so they're, they're actually developing the land for you, and that's the foundation that you're seeing, and that's what um, you're being urged to take time and uh, be patient. Don't get emotionally involved with it because it is coming. It's coming faster than you think. But right now, your preparation is once it comes to you, what does that um, appear like? Because it looks as though you're going to, there's like, it's going to affect the earth on a, a rather, um, deep resonant scale you understand what i'm saying yeah okay and so because of that the sacredness of your endeavor should be treated um ceremoniously because it's as if um it's as if uh, a headdress is being passed to you does that make sense they show me that yeah okay and so um yeah, and so it is, it's just really beautiful. So uh, I'm, I'm also being told that there's a tree, a particular tree on one of the sites, and that's going to be um, the tree magic that you're looking for, okay? Yes, everything makes sense. It's okay, is that better? Yes. All right. Okay, cool, Celia. And then um, I... Uh, the resistance that you're feeling toward the business aspect of it is because you're coming from your heart. It's okay to come from your heart, but they're also giving you the gift so that that way, not to monetize it, but to support the effort to allow it to become what's necessary. So there will be people that you share it with, like Shelly was saying, and um, it might be a healer's, a healer's quarter. You see what I mean? Yes, I do. Right. And so that, that, that right there, it looks like they're preparing you for a lot of psychic endeavors. So, really good. You're very gifted. <laughs> yeah, and give, give Lucinda, give Lucinda um, uh, a call. If, you know, she's a good reader. Yeah. And thank you I, for calling the show, uh, Cecilia. Thank you, Paul. Mm-hmm. You're very welcome. And we're now going to start our – I'm going to start my interview with Lucinda – and um, and then I'll, we'll take our next caller, which is area code 910. What is clairsentient, Lucinda? Uh, clairsentient? 
is, um, or you mean uh, clarescence? Clarescence. I'm sorry, clarescence. No, sorry about that. Right. No, it's okay because, like, uh, well, there are two things, right? But um, clarescence is an energy that was introduced to me from creation. I have been in development since I was um, a young child in my gifts. And spirit has uh, trained me in a variety of things to where I pay attention to energy. I can see energy and experience it. And my upbringing was such in uh, my spirituality that when something occurred, I would have I would have several conversations during the day with a variety of people that were accessible to me. And some I would see, some I wouldn't see, some were tangible or physical beings, but most of them were non-physical. And not all spirit, so cosmic beings as well, a lot of light beings, an awful lot of light beings, but mostly God. And so I use God because that's easy to spell, but it would be like source energy. The equivalent of what some people would channel is infinite intelligence, things like that. And um, I would ask a question, well, why is it like that? How can, how can we can do this? What about this? What about this? And so as I developed, um, I was able to do healings and such. And um, I used to at first like do them like parlor tricks where like I would clap my hands together and rub them until they got warm. And then I'd put them on the spot, the, de- the desired spot where somebody said they had an ache and pain. And then, you know, probably within one to two minutes, the pain would be gone. And um, I think the the most recent one that I did prior to actually stepping into the metaphysical community and practicing my skills on a professional level was probably about, uh, let's say, 15 years ago, I guess, <laughs> and um, my sweetheart had uh, a, a hernia, and I have visceral sight as well, so that means that I see things as they actually are, and um, I have x-ray vision to where, like, I can see inside the body, and uh, I looked inside his body, and I could see clearly that part of his intestine was being pinched by a group of muscles, and so when I put my hands on there, I just uh, got, I received uh, information, okay, so now tell the bell to do this, and then ask the muscles to do that, and so that's all I was doing. I was conveying it energetically, right? And um, it was pretty good, and that lasted probably about two or three years before he had to go in and actually have surgery. So that was really, (laughs) that was really cool. And then um, when... uh, I developed further and I came into the metaphysical community and opened the center, beautiful on the inside body studios here in Anaheim, California. Uh, I just had nothing but time, like 24 seven time to be able to talk to spirit, really get involved with uh, who I am and um, follow my purpose. And so I was, uh, I love to meditate. So meditation is always key in any of the practices that I do. And when I was uh, meditating, I had been asking a lot of questions about how does this alchemy work? How does it, you know, where is its most powerful state? Why is it only limited to healing? And I was told that it's not limited to healing, but it's actually a broader scale. And I had done some uh, attunement through a series of energy transfers uh, with some friends of mine who were willing, about 11. (laughs) And... Um, I've, I've watched their progress in the two years that I've done that. And it's just, it's pretty enormous. And what I had done is I had gone into a meditation and meditation took me into this. It's not a void. It's this place where things are recognized and being yet non-physical. And so when I went in there, um, I was in an accelerated path, and all of a sudden I saw a grouping of nebulous clouds that seemed to continue to reform on themselves over and over and over, yet change within each pattern. But they never got any bigger or any smaller. The coloration changed slightly, but mostly they were white, very inviting. And so when I dove in there, 
Um, it looked like the silver lining of the clouds were like pinks and like sunset colors, just really brilliant colors. And I kept diving deeper and deeper. And at one point, it felt like I was holding my breath and moving through what people might refer to as hell. And so it was like really kind of scary. And they said, just keep going. So I kept going. And then um, I moved into this beautiful, it felt, it felt like uh, grace, right? Like that, that God's grace, that divine grace. So when I moved into that energy, um, I was taken into this, they showed me a, a treasure chest. And so I dove into the gold into the treasure chest. And as I dove through, there was this beautiful blue. And then the blue led to more white. When I got to the white, it was just, it was pretty phenomenal. And they told me to reach my hand into the secret space of essence. And when I did, they said, take that which you wish. And so when I grabbed just a wee bit of the energy, I wanted it to be the unconditional love energy. That's what I wanted to bring out. And then um, on the end of the meditation, it was almost like a repeat of going forward, only just retracting exactly step by step where I'd been. When I came out, as I was uh, backing out, with each movement back, I became more and more unconditional love. I can't explain it any other way. And when I got to this side and I became present again in my physical state, um, it was so enormous. And uh, I knew that, that the energy was not only mine, right? And I said, well, I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm not going to keep this to myself. So I said, okay, I'm just going to give it to everyone. So I tossed it out into the universe for access, right? Because <laughs> I guess that's what you do. And um, I've done several uh, channelings with uh, Claire Essence Energy Magic, which uh, I just, I love the energy because it's filled with nothing but the essence of unconditional love. And unconditional love for me is very magical. So it heals. It uh, creates, and it is just abundant. And so that's, you know, that's the alchemy of who we are. We're here for the expansion. That's my belief system. We're here to um, create for one another and ourselves, to enjoy it, and have just a beautiful, loving, love fest sort of time. So that's what clarescence energy is for me. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Well, let's take our next caller, Lucinda, which is that was okay. very – thank you for sharing. And, and the next caller is area code 910. Hi. Hello, 910. My is, hi, my name is Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. And Jay, how can we hi. help you? I'm calling today – Kind of, I feel like I've been in a rut since July. And I'm wondering if you see a way out. What is your question, Jay? Um, I said I feel like I've been in a rut since J- July. Oh, okay. To find my way out. <laughs> so you're hoping, you know, to get out of the rut that you want to know if you're if things are going to change, and you're going to be able to get out of the rut that you're in. Is that what you're asking, Jay? Correct. Yes. All right. And do you pick up anything, Lucinda? Jay, can you say your full name for me three times, please? Uh, I prefer not to over the air. That's okay. If you just want to say, uh, just say your name three times, what you're comfortable okay. with. There you go. J. 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 Great. So you're a uh, very, um, so what I sense is that uh, you allowed me to connect to your energy, correct? Yes. All right. And uh, you're a very sensitive human being. You're also very loving. You're a little hard on yourself. <laughs> okay? Yes. And um, there's some emotional blocks that you've uh, placed in front of you. And I'm being told to remind you that the emotional blocks are energy. And so you can 
simply move them out of the way by recognizing them and because you're being asked questions emotionally because things are popping up that, uh, like you stated, um, blocks, right? Like you're in a funk to where like you're stagnant, you can't go anywhere, right? And what I'm actually seeing is that um, you've surrounded yourself with perceived protection. And in that protection, moving out of something that feels very familiar is not necessarily scary. It's just unknown. And so because there's an unknown factor, it's more, it feels, hmm, I know how to do this. So I'll just keep doing this. This is comfortable. And I know what I'm going to get from this. If I do that, I'm not really sure what the outcome is going to be. And so since I know exactly what I'm going to get from this, I'm just going to keep doing this. And that's the energy that you're in. Okay? And so the idea, right? (laughs) So the idea is to step back and pull everything in front of you. All right? And give it an, an emotional name or nomenclature, I like to say. And then that way you can begin to, as you recognize it, so I'll tell you some of the things that I see, and then we'll release them. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay, cool. So um, uh, did you, uh, is there, okay, either what I'm sensing is that there's grief, okay? There's like this loss. Is that right? It's either yes. recent or it is an anniversary of. All right? Okay. Okay. And so um, in that uh, grief and loss, right, uh, you're, you're beating yourself up an awful lot and you're saying, well, what if, if only, and I should have been better, I could have been more. And that may not be um, the case. So the energetic block that you've placed in front of yourself is more of saying, I'm living in lack. I am lack. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve. So those are some of the aspects that you're um, allowing uh, to be in your energy field. Okay? So if you were to... Was it... uh, Is it a... uh, Companionship relationship? I'm sorry, what was the question? Was it, is it, um, is it the loss of a relationship? Uh, no, it was the loss of a purpose, really. Okay, that's, that's why I was like, I'm going, it doesn't seem like that. But, um, all right, so you feel like you've lost your passion and drive for where you feel you should be, is that correct? I don't know if I ever had it. Yes. Oh, I know you <laughs> I'm did. Nowhere I can near. see you clearly. I'm nowhere close I, to where I ever imagined I'd be. Monetarily? Because, like, there's a lot of materialistic and, and, sort of aspects that are trying to drive up. Yeah, in any aspect. Oh, okay. All right. So let's go ahead and clear some energy. All right. So what I'd like for you to do is just go ahead and um, I'm going to look at your field really fast. Okay. So what I'm sensing is is that um, you're, you thought you were connected to your soul's purpose. Is that right? And then you, you, Something, there's a a specific, uh, it looks like the straw that broke the camel's back that said, no, this is not your purpose, okay? In that, I'm I'm thinking that something fell through, and that's what feels like the law. It's, It's just... But that's the best way that I can explain it. And I see yeah. like a like a career sort of aspect. So they're showing me like a a corporate sort of feel. And so in that, um, there's this uh, diversity of spirituality as well. So are you a healer? Do you Not practice sure. healing? Do you, no. Have you ever practiced healing? No. Okay. All right. 
I'm a medium. Right. Ended. That's what I was going to Yeah. Okay. So you are a healer. Okay. So there it is right there. So you are a healer. You're allowing your field to get congested. That's all that's happening. Can I teach you a trick? Sure. I call them tricks, but like, I'll just teach you something, okay? And so like sometimes when we uh, practice and we don't think that like we're any good or like let's say we have like those energies that show up, keep in mind that's all it is. It's in your field, all right? And so um, the easiest way that I've ever found to clear is like this, is to uh, find out what my yes or no is on the inside because you need that, okay? You need to know like what you're – because you come through as a pendulum, right? So your best yes and your best no is going to be done either in a sway test, forward, backward, side to side, whatever your yes is. Are you able to stand? Yes. Okay. So if you could stand up and then relax your body, okay, okay, and then uh, say out loud, show me yes. Show me yes. Okay, so see how your body listed to a particular in a particular direction. Yep. Okay, and now say out loud, "Show me no." Show me no. Okay, see, and so like they're almost opposite. They're not exactly opposite, but they're close enough to where like you can tell the difference, right? Yep. Okay, so the first thing that you want to ask is this. Do I have energy in my field that doesn't belong to me? Yep. Okay, and so now what you do is, because like a lot of times we as uh, mediums, we deal with, uh, uh, let's call them uh, earth-focused spirit, right? And so earth-focused spirit is that split energy that you deal with where it feels kind of wonky when they come in and they don't really give you all the truth. And the reason that they don't give you all the truth is because they're incapable because they're still tied to their agenda. So because they're tied to their agenda, they're trying to further their purpose. So they think that if they just give you what you want rather than what the actuality is, it'll further um, enhance and attach them to where it is that they feel that they need to be. But that split energy isn't true. Okay, it isn't. Sure. Okay, all right. So what we do is we practice transitioning spirit on a regular basis. So clearing is like key. So ask, ask out loud, do I have any spirit energy inside of me or inside my energetic field that doesn't belong to me? Do I have any spirit energy inside my field that doesn't belong to me? No, no. Okay, great. Now ask if there's any cosmic energy in your field that doesn't belong to you. I'm being pushed forward right away. Okay. I not to say All right. <laughs> exactly, right? And so what you do is you just say, thank you for your service. You may go. Yeah, thanks for your service. You may go. Okay. And now um, go back to the spirit energy, all right? Is there any untransitioned spirit or is there any spirit in need of transition? I see it. Being pushed forward. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And so what you're going to do is you're just going to create um, an archway, all right, in your mind's eye, Okay. And you can physically make like an archway with your hand, and you're going to fill it with divine white light. Okay? Yep. The idea is that it must be brighter than you because you're a beacon of light. That's why, like, moths to a flame, they're attracted to you. And then you give them direction, go to the light, go to the light, go to the light. And at first it might start as a, a gentle movement, and then it looks like a blur. Okay, so right now I'm seeing the field show up. I'm seeing the boy is there. I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the path. I'm seeing everything. That's good. That's really good. Okay. Just gonna take that one and go to the light. There you go. 
Ooh, nice. Okay. And then just take your hand and push down the archway into the ground. So that way you close that gateway. All right. Very good. And now um, the third energy, right, that we uh, don't naturally uh, look for but um, would be would be good, right, um, is uh, – and it shows up like uh, chaos, confusion, anxiety, stress, um, lack, <laughs> okay? It's all those uh, – the, the poor self-talk, right? And that's going to be like religious energy from the other spectrum, opposite of the angels or angelics, right? And so, yeah, mm-hmm. if there's any religious energy in your field that doesn't belong to you. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And so I just uh, take a golden lasso and I pull it right out and I cast it up to the God of my understanding. How's that feel? Great. Cool. Okay. So now you're in like alignment. So ask if your field is clear. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay. It feels good, right? It does. Yeah. It's amazing. And so like you could do this anytime that you feel like a little funky, but the best thing, because like we don't walk around teaching this, right? But it would be so good if we did, right? And so if you were to, when you feel that funk come toward you, remember it's an energy and just say, hey, do you belong to me or what's your name? And then that way you'll know what your encounters are. And so um, it's very natural for us to have encounters with cosmic beings, uh, with uh, spirit energy or religious energy. And all of it shows up because we uh, cry for help, right? And so it's whoever hears that cry first shows up. Now, you can keep in mind that um, the cosmic beings that show up, sometimes they're meant to be there. So you can ask questions like, are you here for my greatest and highest good? And do you serve the God of my understanding? And if they do, you ask them, what are you here to help me with, right? Because you have great communication. So this will be awesome for you. And they're usually facilitators. So you ask them, how can you help me? Okay. And then um, yeah. spirit guides and guardian, right? It's really cool. Okay. And um, yeah. And so like the other energies, the other energies show up because you've asked for help. So keep in mind what they're doing is they'll bring spiritual lessons. They'll bring, you know, they'll bring a variety of things to help you achieve what it is that you desire. So if you can get a little bit more focused on what you wish to ask for from the universe, and um, clearer on the desired um, representation, then, you know, and then you say, and I'd like to have it with ease and grace, right? (laughs) Rather than trial and tribulation, then it will get a little bit easier for you. But right now you're enjoying alignment. And so that alignment right there, what you do is now you just imagine yourself filling with divine white light. So that way you can expand all of your chakras and create a harmony for them. They don't necessarily need to be in balance. When they're in balance, that means that they're all the same, but not all of them operate the same. So you just want them to be in harmony and at their expanded version um, so that they can amplify for you your walk. Because you're looking for your soul's purpose a little bit, but I see you as a very gifted medium. I think that you've been um, very dark Okay, and so maybe what you want to do is get out into the sunlight a little bit more, right? Because, yeah, you better do it like while you can. Where are you located? Uh, North Carolina. Okay, yeah, so you better get out like while you can because it's going to get cold real fast, right, if it isn't starting already. And then do you do tree hugging at all? (laughs) Um, Actually, I play disc golf, so I'm out in the woods oh, like every cool. day. Oh, okay. All right. And so, okay, so are you practicing magic? Magic? No. Oh, well, okay. Maybe with, with discs. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome, though. But disc golf is awesome. I used to play, so I like that a lot. All right. Well, it sounds like you're really headed in the right direction. I think that it would be a good idea to – because this is the beaver moon that's coming up, 
right, the next full moon, I would uh, suggest taking things that you have thought about over and over and over and putting them down on a piece of paper. It's going to be, you know, probably an additional three weeks, right? And Mm -hmm. when the full moon comes, I would do like a little um, gratitude ritual that you're ready to release all these things. Because we... Even though you get rid of the energy, you still have the process, right? So as an emotion, right, right, so as an emotion pops up, what you want to do is you want to tell the emotion, hey, thank you so much. I am ready to release you and then just let go of it. And we have a tendency and we're very conditioned as a society that um, if uh, we have what is um, looked at as poor behavior, like let's say we have a bout of anger, or we have um, maybe a sarcasm that isn't, you know, maybe it's acerbic, right? And then we berate ourselves. Oh, I shouldn't be that way. I should work on that. What we're doing is, is that we're taking that behavior and we're internalizing it once again. It has surfaced so that, that way we can look at it and say, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore and let go of it. So, you know, those are just some uh, tools that I use. I hope that was helpful. Perfect. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. And Jay, and Jay, if you want a um, private session with Lucinda, you know she's uh, a reader and a healer. She may be able to uh, give you more, share more information to help you. So, how can Jay contact you, Lucinda? Oh wow, Shelley, thank you. Seven one four two two zero eight three five one is my telephone number. And uh, you can reach me through Body Studios, so it's beautiful on the inside is the acronym, so B-O-T-I studios.com. Have a great day, Jay. Nice. Hey, thank (laughs) you so much. You do the same. You're welcome. And thank you for calling the show, Jeff. It was meant for you to call. You connected to the right person that was able to help you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Jay, and, and have a good weekend, Jay. Thank you, you too. Uh, thank you. I want to thank the callers who participated in the Psychic Horizon show. I want to thank, um, for those of you that weren't able to connect with Lucinda, um, Lucinda, give your phone number on the air if we had other callers that may be wanting to call you. Oh, sure, sure. My name is Lucinda Collis. You can reach me in sunny Southern California at 714 714- Two two zero eight three five one, and I'm located in Anaheim, California, about one mile north of Disneyland on Harbor Boulevard at six zero seven in Anaheim. And you can find me also online at bodystudios.com. B O T I, beautiful on the inside, bodystudios.com. Thank you, Shelley. You're such a blessing. Oh, you're welcome, dear, and thank you for being a guest. I'll have you back, and I'll see you next month at the fair. And thank you for being a guest. It's always a pleasure. And I wanted to thank Tiffany White Sage Woman for uh, producing uh, Goldilocks Production, for producing the Psychic Horizon Show. And I want to thank all the callers who participated in the Psychic Horizon Shows. And for those of you that didn't get a reading, you know, call Lucinda, and she could give you a private session. Thank you, Lucinda. Thank you, Shelley. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a great day.